My name is Gabor Daniel Balog, uh, and I will talk about algorithmic differentiation of structured mesh applications using the OPS framework. So what is algorithmic differentiation? Algorithmic differentiation is used to evaluate derivatives of the function which defined by a computer program. Uh, and why do we need it? So a lot of uh, applications require derivatives. Uh, and to get these derivatives, there are three major approach. The first is the finite differentiation, which is uh, slower and especially slower for high dimensions and has lower accuracy. And we can get the exact solution, the exact derivatives with symbolic differentiation. However, it cannot handle some uh, constructs of programming like uh, unbounded loops. And uh, the algorithmic differentiation is somewhere between those two. So we get the exact solution and uh, uh, we get a somewhat uh, faster approach than for finite differentiation. So let's take our program as a function which uh, from a set of inputs generates uh, a set of outputs. So uh, our goal is to get the Jacobian of this uh, function where each element of the Jacobian is the derivative of some output with respect to some input. But the question is how to get there. So let's assume that our function is a composite function with k uh, subfunction. Then basically our Jacobian can be written as the product of the Jacobian of the subfunctions. So we want to uh, use this fact and we can do AD in two different modes. Uh, the first one is for, called forward mode AD when we compute the action of the Jacobian to a vector from the input space. And the backward mode AD computes the action of the transpose of the Jacobian uh, to a vector from the output space. And we will do, do the second one uh, and uh, in a moment we will see why. So the backward mode AD uh, we need to choose a vector from the output space. And if we choose uh, a vector such that it has only one non-zero element and uh, that non-zero element is a, is a one, then this uh, matrix vector product will produce the uh, ith row for the Jacobian. And uh, for most applications, especially from finance, uh, this information is, is sufficient. Okay, so to do the do, uh, backward mode AD, we need the derivative of one function, function of the chain at a time. So we need to choose these sub-functions carefully to implement uh, algorithmic differentiation efficiently. But the tricky part is that we need to feed the uh, state of the program at the time where the primal is evaluated uh, to the Jacobian of, of the given primal subfunction. So the common ap approach to implement backward mode AD is with operator overloading. Basically, they do uh, overloads and wrapper classes for primitive types, and the backend will register every uh, elementary operation on those types. Uh, and this leads uh, a really huge chain. So basically, we, we say that every sub function is a single elementary operation uh, and this requires uh, really high amounts of memory and our background is we want to do algorithmic differentiations on hpc applications and we we developing 
domain specific languages for uh, HPC applications uh, and the goal is that every year uh, there is a new hardware coming out and it's infeasible to port each application to the newest hardwares every year so we try to hide the platform specific details from the from the developers and uh, uh, this way we want to uh, give future proof and performance portable solutions for for these developers and our topic is here uh, the oxford parallel library for structured mesh solvers the ops library where which is a, a embedded uh, domain specific language in c plus plus with api calls for high level constructs uh, so we can define grids and blocks of data on those grids and we will have loops over uh, a subgrid accessing data defined on the on the grid and with with stencils and from this description uh, these api calls ops will generate parallel loops uh, implementations for all kinds of hardware so it, we choose the sub functions for the backward node ID such that we will uh, regard one parallel loop as a single sub function. The parallel loop calls will take the loop body as a function and uh, we will have the descriptors for each param uh, access data in the uh, function. And we will know that which iteration access uh, which data uh, through what kind of stencils and uh, wh what data is written and what data is uh, read only. Uh, so for, uh, the question is that can we do AD from these informations only? There is one uh, missing information. Uh, I at first glance that we don't have the derivative of the loop bodies but if we suppose that we have the derivatives of the loop bodies uh, the current implementation will search for these uh, derivatives uh, by name but in the future uh, and we already tested some uh, ways to generate the derivative loop bodies from the uh, functions of the loop body itself so uh, if we have suppose that we we have the derivatives uh, then we can uh, record the chain of loops that are uh, accessed on the during the the computation of the primal code and then we can basically reverse the order of the of the loops and in this way we can evaluate the chain rule at the loop level so there is two main thing that's still missing uh, we need to store the immediate state intermediate states uh, for each loop since we need to feed the uh, derivative loops the states that uh, are the primal code uh, runs on and we need to reverse the data flow inside the loops so for the intermediate state storage we introduced a so-called tape data structure where each loop we will save a copy of the um, of the overwritten data into the tape and at the final stage of the of the primal code we will call the ops interpret adjoints function and inside that function we can reverse the chain and we will load the um, the intermediate states for each loop uh, that we we require from the tape and for reversing the data flow ops requires each loop to only use gather operations which means that we only write data in the center of the iteration and we will read 
data from neighboring points through stencils. So for example, on the left hand side, we will read the U2 uh, data set with a 00, zero offset. And uh, we will basically we will read the four neighboring points in a 2D grid uh, to compute the mean of those uh, points. But so so these kind of kernels is uh, trivially parallelizable. There is no risk conditions in them. However, uh, if we compute the derivative of such loop, we, we need the, the Jacobian of such loop. Basically, we, we will uh, end up with scatter operations. So we will read the derivative uh, on the current iteration, so with 0, 0 offset, offset, and we will write the derivative of other data sets with, uh, with non-zero offsets. So basically, the gather operations from the primer code will, will, uh, will be changed to a scatter operation. So to avoid the race conditions that are arising from, from the scatter operations, we introduced a, a two color striped coloring. So we will divide the iteration range uh, to domains that will be uh, computed by threads. And inside these domains, we will use a two color, uh, we will use two colors. And uh, the first stripes can be run parallel since the uh, stencils will not overlap. So we choose the, the width of these uh, stripes such that the stencils are not overlapping uh, so that they can run in parallel. And we will have a synchronization point after the first color and then we can run parallel the, the second color. And so for the performance with this method, um, on CPU, we used uh, an application from finance and we got uh, the derivatives under six times of uh, the time to evaluate the primer, which is close to theoretical optimum um, because uh, you, the usual amount of uh, floating point operation required to evaluate the derivative of a loop is around uh, four times uh, than the required amount of floating point operations for the, pri for the primer code. So we will add the overhead of loading and storing uh, the, the checkpoints to the tape and from the tape and we get six times uh, as much time to evaluate the, the derivatives as uh, to evaluate the primer code. So I think it's, it's a really good result. And uh, the catch is that we have a problem with, with the memory. As I mentioned, the operator overloading uh, implementations usual, usually suffer from, from huge amount of data need to be stored in the tape. Uh, we raise the level of the, of the chain that we store, but we still need to store uh, all overwritten data uh, with this implementation, which can lead to um, immense amount of memory, which is manageable for small applications, but uh, not so much for, for uh, higher dimensional and, and bigger applications. So we need to work on that. Uh, in conclusions, we successfully uh, computed adjoints of applications on CPUs uh, in a parallel manner and we showed promising runtime results and performance. However, the current implementation suffers from high um, memory pressure. So we're currently working on an implementation that will recompute loops and uh, only save data sets at certain points to the tape. And with recomputing, we will restore the intermediate states. And thank you for your attention.